One second, guys. Let me do something. Share. Let's see. Chat for the people who just came on this who are going to be on. Um, this is a live, so I'm just waiting for a second. What is that? Eight now. Turn it around. Oh, you see something. Bing, bing. Yeah, we'll rock with the eight millimeter. I know it's late. What time is it? Let me see. Twelve thirty-five. I hope uh, some of is some of the original families on, but uh, I just wanted to come on to tell you about the trip I just had a little bit. It's only going to be about ten minutes or so, and then um, see. I wish you could edit these afterward though, because I was just on for like five minutes trying to. Uh, get this situated though but hey what's up mike more mile mike what's up what's up uh market scene is uh, i got a couple of announcements guys I'm, i came on here guys yeah if you don't mind no just hit that like button no commercial no ads all we ask is that you subscribe and uh hit the like button and that's like the handshake deal we do here like this you know street guy deal Back in the day when we didn't need fucking contracts, you know? So if you don't mind hitting that subscribe, I mean, I really appreciate it, guys. No ads, nothing. If you see my numbers and stuff, you know I could be monetized and I don't do it. And um, that's because I want to give back. And um, I do this out of just pure passion. And I love you guys. And um, Mar uh, so, what is it, two? We're gonna, I'll just bullshit like this till it hits five minutes and then they'll get all five minutes, I'll explain. I don't know though too if you guys saw the uh, profile pic though, but that was uh, myself and Pat Nee. If you know Pat was, Pat was back uh, in the day, uh, worked with Whitey, but before that he was involved in the in the gang war. And then he uh, um, had the IRA connection he was, Pat was actually the one who had the IRA connection. That's a fact. I believe he's the last guy alive from the Boston Gang Wars. And uh, it was an honor to sit at his table in his house. And uh, he attached to From the Grave, too, as well. So, um, what do you guys see who we got for the docuseries? It's coming together so good, so nice, and... Uh, Every day there's a change, you know. I'm sure we're still gonna hit a hurdle, but like I told everyone, you know, once a fun, once a hurdle comes, you don't fucking run away. You look at that motherfucker and you say, "Yeah, what's up?" and you fucking go after it and you attack. You don't go, "Ooh, how are we gonna beat it?" and then you quit. Fuck that. I've been running this ship basically broke the whole time, figuring it out for the past fucking seven, eight months, and now it's paying off. And I want all my subscribers to know, I'm just always, always, no matter if this ever goes anywhere or anything ever happened, you guys are like Mike, who's here, Mark, who's here. You guys are my people. I want to meet all of you, hang out. Fucking Front the Funk came down here from Maine. It was amazing. I went up to Springfield, Mass. The way you see the episode I'm dropping tomorrow, which is Seppi Diarco, well-respected guy, fantastic guy. He's playing Raymond Patriarca Sr. on From the Grave. If you guys are on my uh, YouTube, I believe uh, Mark and Cini, I believe, is over there. I don't know, Mark, uh, Mike. Uh, Mike, I love how you got a wrench. Who gave that to you, Leon? You, and you're more than welcome to have a wrench, pal. Um, what was I going to say? That means that you're a captain. No, actually, it just means you're a main man on my channel. So, congratulations. <laughs> I'd give one to Mark and Cini, too. I, I trust them. But... Um, Nah, you guys are great. I really appreciate you. And uh, this is why I do what I do. But if you are, right, so if you guys saw the picture, that was me and Pat. And what was crazy about that was we were actually um, leaving. 
Yeah, where's Mayan? Hold on, let's see if I give you one, buddy. One second. Live chat. Let me see. Oh, wow, why didn't they let me do it? Oh, wait, welcome to live chat. La Senorita, here comes everyone. I thought you have one. I thought you gave one. No, I did. I did give one to you. I appreciate that. How you doing? I'm just telling. If you guys see the thumbnail, I'm just letting everyone know. Last Serenity Rita, hit that like button if you don't mind. And if anyone else is on, please subscribe. Uh, no commercial, no ads here. You know how we rock and roll. And uh, Mike Mormile gave. I, I did. No, I know. Mike, I forgot. I just, I remember now. You gave me one about three shows ago. I appreciate that. Yeah, you and Leon are the only ones with the wrenches. Now, listen, the wrenches are for, um, what do you call it? people that we're going to whack out of our uh, chat. So um, if someone comes in here and, no, if, if MRE, though, comes in here, Mob uh, Rats Exposed and starts talking shit, don't kick him off because I want to keep him on because I need to talk to him. And uh, I appreciate all these. You have no idea. Even if there's... Me and Giuseppe had the biggest episode I ever had. Uh, I think over 200 watched the actual live. And then it hit 1,000 like by the end of the night. And yeah, Big G484. Here comes my fucking crew. Big G484. Big G fucking I'd give him a wrench too. Uh, but listen, Mike. So if someone comes on and says, fuck you, Loomis. Don't throw the wrench at him yet. You know, let me know. I'll look into it. And if I need you to fucking hit him over to have it the wrench and get him out of the chat, I'll let you know. Um, Big G, yeah, hit that like button, Big G. That helps this fucking move around more than anyone knows. If there's anyone new here for the first time, please subscribe. Um, Big G, La Senorita. You guys, also, if you would go to La Senorita's page, she actually, congratulations, she just hit 500 subscribers. La Senorita shows like a lot of the black and white old school type, you know, female type actresses, uh, some mafia stuff, you know, I think Bonnie and Clyde's in there, stuff like that, but there she is, La Senorita, and um, subscribe to her channel, let's get her to a thousand, and she hit 500, so congratulations La Senorita, and um, keep it going, you'll definitely fucking get there, and I will absolutely support you, so I. Uh, you got my support, and if you need anything, just let me know. Okay, I'll wait for the order. <laughs> Mike, sometimes I just got to whack him right out. I'll let you know, but um, bring it to my attention, and then, um, you know, we'll talk live right on here, and then, you know, we'll, or, or maybe we'll leave him go. We'll get off. We'll all talk. We'll make our decision. He comes back. He's done. That's all. So, congratulations. I got two made guys on here. Leon and Mike are they're made in the fucking Santoro crew. Sorry, La Senorita, you can't make women, but if you could, I would make you. Big J's fucking right there, you know? Big G's right there. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. I'm having to fucking laugh. But, you know what I mean, Mike? So, fucking take them out whenever you want. And, uh, <laughs> hold on. Thank you, Michael. All right, guys, one second here. Ooh. Let me just put this right here. Oh, man, they don't even let me. I, see, I say this every time. I guess I can't even talk on this. But I have to hide these comments. They keep talking, though. I just can't see. Um, yes, keep talking, though. So I just want to go over this guy. I got to call someone, though. Very important. So... Now, if you see that, that's Pat Nee. If you guys know who Pat was, he wrote A Criminal and an Irishman. Him and Bulger were enemies at first, but then they uh, became partners. And uh, Ben Whitey uh, just became who he became with Stevie because a lot of the guys like Howie Winter got busted. And you're gonna, I would have Howie Winter in on this project. Jimmy Shirts, congratulations, Jimmy. Jimmy will be playing Howie Winter. And uh, like I told you, it's Giuseppe DiArco, whose house I was at in Springfield. He will be playing Raymond Patriarcha Sr. And wait, guys, it's like Raymond Patriarcha Sr. Resurrected. Wait, do you see what I do to just set? 
And all these people are like, well, I don't know if he's going to look like this or look like that or whatever. Guys, that's why we have makeup, wardrobe and makeup and all that good stuff. So this is like as legit as it gets. Subscribe, please, and uh, no ads. So I go to Springfield, Mass. I'm there for about two or three days, and I'm having a blast. Giuseppe's the first time I met him, fucking great guy. Sleeping probably now because he's got work in the morning. But uh, we had a great time. We went to Buckeye's Smoke Shop. It was fucking incredible, the cigar shop over there. I want to give a shout out to Dave, the owner. If Dave sees me. I also want to give a shout out to Frank, the owner of Mount Carmel Society. I didn't make it though there, but Frank made me a lifetime member. And next time I get to Springfield, Frank, I'll stop in Mount Carmel, pal. And uh, thank you for that. Lifetime member in that uh, social club. So I am honored. Also, um, so then I leave Giuseppe at the two. We did a great interview in Buckeye Smoke Shop, which you guys are going to see. It's on my Facebook, the raw unedited cut. Fantastic interview. And then I went to Jimmy Shirts. I got I, I was supposed to be there at 10 a.m. I got there at fucking 10 p.m., a little late. And uh, uh, it was funny. I put up, if you go to the shorts, you can see him bitching about it. But we had a great fucking show as well. Then I stayed over Jimmy Shirts, and then I had a meeting we sat down at the restaurant, sat down with uh, basically lights, camera, and action. Some people who are editing fantastic editors, this and that, who are interested in the project. And there was a fantastic meeting. And here's me. I'm like, at Jimmy's house. I'm like, oh, it was Tuesday, I believe. I don't got to fucking uh, stay any longer, man. A lot happened. I got Giuseppe. I got Jimmy. I met... Uh, some great guys who want to work on the project. We could film in Boston. Oh, we're filming in Boston now, by the way. But anyway, so I'm in my car in the park aid, and I'm like, I'm leaving, getting ready to leave. Jimmy goes, Don't, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, why? He's like, we've got something to do tonight. And I'm like, okay, what? And he's like, we're going to have dinner with Pat and E. And I was just like, oh, shit. So I fucking obviously stayed, and then we went to Pat's house. And it was uh, just talking, reminiscing about the old gang wars. And uh, it was an honor to, you know, to meet him from that, uh, from someone else from that era. But uh, like I always say, man, my most real guy though right there is right here. Johnny Shea. Fucking never fucking cooperated. Never, he won't even tell you. Like, Johnny won't even talk to those guys. Not Pat. Pat didn't cooperate, but I'm just saying like. He won't even talk to him. And people got to realize, too, though, that for my docu-series, though, there's gonna, there has to be people on, though, that uh, co um, cooperate it because they know the story. And uh, it's a different it's a different though, a thing, though, because when the boss is, too, you never know. Let's see. You are the king of perfect timing. You, you're welcome. Wait, hit the like button. Can't wait, woman. I just subbed. Mike, you weren't even subbed? How do you know I'm even on? Thank you, though. I appreciate that. Congratulations, Loomis, on that news. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, guys, if none of you are sub subscribed, it's free. Please hit it. And I appreciate you more than you ever know. But hold on. that was a great interview you did with Shay. Thank you. Uh, did you see the interview? Well, Giuseppe's is good. Jimmy Shirts is good. And uh, once we get that Pat one, though, Pat Knee. Uh, well, he's going to step full interview, though. It's going to be in the docu-series. And I learned a lot, man. Like, just sitting there, like, just learning, 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 learning about, like, the old days. And, like, it's just a different area, different, uh, different upbringing than most. Impeach, you are in my hometown, Loomis. The parties I had in Southie, Kylie, was my favorite bar. Yeah, Impeach. Impeach. I, I just tell everyone because there's no ads, no whatever anyone knew. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I don't monetize. I just love my subscribers. We're on. This is a family. Don't worry. I, the, fuck the monetization. Come on, on. You don't need YouTube Premium for me, and uh, that's staying that way for for a while. So, uh, guys, though, I know I always talk about rap. Band. Well, let me finish talking about Pat's house. So, and Pat told me like, yeah, you could say this or you could say that. It's just funny, man. not funny how they live, but I'm not going to say any names, but he was with someone and uh, hanging out with them all the time. And there is a list of people uh, that was um, 
you know, they had to go. And who's this? USMC still. Oh, there's Randy. What's up, my brother? It's my brother right there who fucking legitimately deeply, not, not biological, but he's an East Ender, tough as nails. Fucking, he's like, Loomis, after like some stuff that's going on, he's like, Loomis, I'll be your bodyguard. I'll be whatever. Randy, thank you for your service too. Randy was a sniper in the war. Thank you, Rand. And, uh, just a badass who actually fucking cares. And uh, I love him like a brother. He is my brother. You know, he's actually, from after I started doing this, guys, a lot of people are like, what are you thinking? Like, why are you doing that? You should be going back to work. And now something real good like happened. And it's just like, whatever. But Randy was always there for me and believed in me. So thanks, pal. I'm definitely hitting the like. Always do whatever. You see your show. Good everyone. Good evening to you, Mike More Miley. Nice. Stilts USMC right there. I love you. Thank you for your service. Fucking and thank you for fucking helping me out, brother. And uh, I get to get you back. And uh, let me know next time you're down uh, wherever. Don't work on a car or whatever. I got to come down and shoot the shit. I'm always down that way anyway when I see Tina. But um, so guys, yeah. So Pat was saying, um, oh man, what's the story I was just about to tell you? Is I thought it was a story, or maybe I was just saying like he was just telling. You know, a lot of stories that are already kind of out there, but, uh, oh, yeah, like his one buddy, I, oh, I told you about the Rolodex, right? Did I win the one guy? Oh, no, his one buddy's like, Pat's like, you were next. And he's like, I don't, f get the fuck out of here, I was next. Because in that life, you talk to, like, the guy who's driving, or, Rand, it's like me and you, I love you, Bob, that's how they act. Next thing you know, boom. And then, I. Uh, so there's two no fucking stories though, guys, that uh, I just want you to, to hear. So Johnny Monterano, if you know who that is, um, just very, 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 um, I don't want to say cold, just cold, but uh, he doesn't have any reaction. It's hard, to, like Pat said, it's very hard to startle Johnny Monterano. And if you guys know, this story, I'm sure you've heard of Johnny Monterano. And uh, I would have to say that Johnny Monterano is probably the uh, night and peach. You ain't coping with the big C. How are you coping? Love you. I appreciate the support. And I'll go, good night and peach. And um, I appreciate the support coping. If there's no ads here, I go, I just travel and try to get some good content for everyone. No ads. All I ask for is hit the like button and subscribe. Tell your friends this is the real fucking shit over here. Where uh, not the not the pretenders. You know, there's I'm not gonna mention any names, but there's a guy who was a mobster though that that went and uh, had to to uh, whatever testify, and he's doing YouTube stuff right now, and he said something like about Russell that's not true, and you know you know what I mean, and. I mean, I wasn't even in any of those families, guys. And, like, you know, he was. And, uh, you know, but like we, like I was telling, like, when Pat asked, and even John, when me and Shay were uh, talking in the beginning, like, this is Mafia truth. And these fucking Southie guys, they're the fucking truth. I'm just being honest. I mean, they're a different fucking level. Um, I'm finding out, and Pat, Pat did admit this, and he never says it like he done docu-series. I go, Pat, let's be honest. I go, Whitey, because I know I always see on the documentaries and stuff that like, oh, you're just gonna, because you know, he didn't like them that much as that. And he admitted, he said, no, he was a bad, bad, bad. Well, the other guy was with Pat, said so he's a bad, bad, bad dude, and Pat's like, it, yeah, extremely intimidating. So to hear Pat and he say that about Whitey, it was just like, whoa. And then, uh, I got stories about Whitey for days, especially from John, though, from shit that he did. But from digging into this project, guys, you have to understand I'm finding out a lot of new stuff and hearing a lot of new stuff from people who are around and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I knew Whitey was always like, you know, a mafia boss that people were like, whatever. But I mean, I mean, he had everyone on lock. Everyone, like he, they were petrified of him. Like, that's a fact. And uh, Johnny Shea told me, like, you know, I could say that. But, you know, absolutely fucking petrified of this guy. And he was a fucking nutcase who would fucking kill you in a second. Uh, the L, the MK Ultra experiment 
things that definitely fucked with his head. He did it 50, what was it? I think I looked at the thing 51 or 52 times. You know, strapped down, doing all that. You got to realize, too, guys, they usually say, you know, you're a killer. You know, you fuck with animals, whatever. So this guy loved animals, right? He didn't have his first fucking kill till he was 45 years old. So that, too, because he was just, he's a bank robber. And then he went to then he went to prison in, in Atlanta. And then he had to go to Alcatraz because there was an escape plot going on in Atlanta, and he got caught. So they put him to Alcatraz. That's where they usually put prisoners because they say you can't escape from Alcatraz. So uh, he um, when was I getting that? Yeah. So it's the bottom line is like because I can't keep those saying every little detail. We got to save it for the for the docu series though. But I. Uh, you got to remember, in history, and this is what I hate, because look, you guys know, I love, absolutely love the, uh, to read history, even back to the Viking stuff, and I'm starting to become a, doing, uh, well, the, the books in the car, but this was like the runes, like doing, re like reading runes and shit, I love that stuff, I'll read, like I love history, but you know what, we can't trust history, and you want to know why, because Remember how I tell you guys with my show, there's no ego. I just want you guys to know the truth. People turn the truth to benefit them with their ego and we'll just never know. Like I tell people like, you know, this is the truth. But if a wise guy though doesn't tell the truth, I, that's not on me. Because I'm just saying though that, well, if he doesn't, then I'll look into it and I'll even call him out. I'll be, I'll be like, no, dude, that's wrong. You know, if I could find the evidence on it. But with the hearsay stuff they say, like just that he, that's hearsay, like we don't know. But like, for, you know, I love though this, but you don't think though that the Viking culture from back in fucking the 800s, you know, 1200s even all that, like people who are writing on it. And I know there was like, or, or even new shit that's out now and people are trying to write like this or that. It's to benefit them in their pocket and I hate that shit. Fucking tell the fucking, like history, like tell the fucking truth, man. Like, like, you're like, what, like, you're going to alter history for your ego? If one person's going to alter it. I hate that shit. It's a benefit them. If I, like, what, okay, let's hypothetically, um, I'm telling a history story about uh, a, a, a gang war. And someone came and they kicked the shit out of me, but I fucking got a shot off. Like, most people would be like, he didn't kick the shit out of me. He fucking hit me, and I got no. I would say this dude kicked the fucking shit out of me, and I just—it's just they alter it, and I get it because guys, when you're dealing though with murderers, and it's just you know it's a different type of level. So I want to tell you one other story. Johnny Monterano. I don't know if any of you know who that is. Uh, Johnny Monterano was uh, a very, very, very uh, dangerous guy, hitman who. Uh, Helped out Whitey. And let me guys, I want to tell you guys one other thing. I'm trying to get this chat up for a second. Here we go. Welcome, Michael. Vikings love it. Night I just want to see if they got anyone else still. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys for hitting that like button. Somerville, what's up? Also, Charlestown. I'm working on something on Charlestown with another Shay. So you guys should understand that. Um, Anthony Shay, you are in my town, Loomis. I was in your town. I'll be there Monday again, pal. Why the hell didn't we meet up? Hit that like button, Mark and Cenas. I like that. And, uh, all right. So, listen, guys. Yeah, Big J, 484, my man. Uh, hold on. Let me just put these down for a second. All right. Guys, remember, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, um, and it's also for the docuseries, your name will go up and everything. The link is in the description, the Cash App link. Um, look at it as a virtual tip because we're not monetizing here and we don't do ads. So if anyone could throw something small, it always helps. It always helps the channel. Get, be able to get me to go to Boston and shit like that. So, all right. Now... Johnny Monterano, which I think a lot of you guys probably heard of Johnny Monterano. Uh, that's, that, I, I mean, that's, that, that's a legitimate scary fucking dude. And <laughs> so um, the story was Johnny Monterano, you know, he had someone on his, he, I guess he had a few guys, you know, he had a hit list or, or maybe it was just one. I don't know, but I, I thought he said he had a hit list. He walks into a bar and uh, there's one guy sitting at the bar. 
Just one. And he sits down next to him. And act, actually, no, Johnny was getting a drink, I believe. And the guy's like, here, and sit down next to him. So Johnny Monterano sits down. Oh, that's the words Pat said. You can never rattle Johnny Monterano. Like, guys can come and shoot in a gun. He'll be like this. You know what I mean? Like, like that Joker, the Iceman who lies. Like, Monterano makes him look like a fucking teddy bear. So Johnny Monterano sitting down. He's getting along with this fucking guy. Like, they're fucking like, blah, 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 having some drinks, whatever. And then all of a sudden, the guy goes, hey, man, my name is blah, blah, so-and-so. And Johnny Monterano doesn't say a word. He's like, because that was the guy in the hit list. And he just goes, boom. Guy slums on him. Johnny Monterano fucking picks him up, puts him on his shoulders, goes outside, throws him in his trunk, leaves like nothing happened. Literally walking out of the bar like this. Not running out. Not No. Beep, beep. Oh, they didn't have the, the beep beep stand, but opens the trunk. Boom. Just like that. With the, that. Uh, I can't wait. I always sit in front of that guy. <laughs> I want to pick his brain. But uh, if you haven't seen the 60 Minutes, guys, type in John Monterano. I think it's M O T A. No, Rano. R A. No, M O T O R A N O. But it'll still come up. John. Johnny, just put John Monterano and watch the 60-minute episode of him. <sighs> like, you could just tell. Like, this guy is just, oh, you want me to kill him? No problem. No problem, Chuck. No. Chuck, could you put on channel 37 for me now? Like, like that. <laughs> you know? Uh, he is, uh, he is, uh, he has a book out, but fucking Howie Carr wrote it. I don't like Howie Carr. Uh, but I have to talk to Howie Carr because I do kind of want him on this docuseries. So I have to just, you know, bite my tongue. But I'm going to fucking still be like, I'm going to ask him, like, the guy makes fun. Listen, Whitey was a terrible human being. Yes, Whitey was bad. This isn't a fucking thing. This, this is more on the, the other evil, which you guys will find out. Bulger, everyone knows the Bulger story. Everyone knows about Whitey, this and that. But this is Whitey, don't get me wrong. But... You'll see what I'm talking about. And I don't, just don't want to say it now because channels get striked and you don't know. Whatever. But guys, I know you know about Rap Bastards, true crime bestseller from John Red Shea. It's fucking fantastic. Um, but Johnny's got another book. And he's a, a kid from Southie. Great book right here. And... Um, I think you could get it's real cheap on Amazon and you might even be able just to get the Kindle for free, but because you know, not, it's not about the money or whatever though, but it's just a great it's a great read. It's kinda like a little prelude after Black Mass. I mean not Black Mass after Rap Bastards. But you guys should really get if you didn't read Rap Bastards yet, then I don't know what you're doing. You won't even be able to stop reading. And it's the only guy who never cooperated, the most honorable who who ran one of ID Whitey's entities. And uh what a good friend. Because a lot, I can't tell you what's been going on behind the scenes. Hopefully next week I could because uh, of contracted stuff, guys. But I got something to announce that's real exciting. And um, just a lot's happening. And this man, Johnny Shea, I can't even tell you how good of a fucking friend he is. Who genuinely cares. Who genuinely... I called him up. I'm like, Johnny, I'm going to fucking give you a fucking thousand. I'm gonna, I want to give you. A, I'm not going to tell you how much I tell, tell him. I'm like, I'm going to give you. And he's like, he goes, Loomis, no. Get out, get yourself situated, blah, 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 this and that. You know, he's a real one, a real friend. Just like my man Randy there. You know, I know my, I know who my acquaintances are and my real people. And John's a friend. And uh, I'm just, to have a friend like that, I wouldn't have known certain things. And he's like, you know, keep it close to the vest. Vest, be careful. Be careful. Don't be just telling this or that. You don't know people are just out to try to get you. He's like, Eric, not everyone is like you where you're all like giving. And that's what I did, guys. You know, I got a payment and I fucking gave it all away to people who need it. That's, I don't care. Like, I, I really don't care about money. So, but people are like, dude, just start taking care of yourself because this is all you're doing. And, um, and you're working your ass off on it, and you're, you know, because those trips to Boston aren't cheap and all that. But you know what? I, I asked for this. It's passion. I don't even think of money or something like that. Money will come whenever. 
but just stay with your passion. And if you ever, guys, if you ever want to do something, there's the best advice. I did a lot of things in my life. I was in, I fought, but this is all metal now. I gave that a shot. I did stand up comedy. I did fucking um, music. Um, I did voiceover for commercials. And now, like, I'm trying to, like, do this. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is I the stuff I did back then was like, yeah, I got to work. Boom, boom, boom. You can't just dip your fucking toe in the water. If you want and like, make something. And it's not even YouTube. YouTube could be your stepping stone because, yeah, I may only have 2,000 subscribers. And, by the way, whoever is the 2,000 subscriber, cash and beautiful fucking, uh, whoever is the 2,000 subscriber, you get fucking... I won't say the amount yet, though, but it's a cash prize. We could fly you in the Pittston, fucking do a little Irishman fucking tour, hang out, hotel stay, all of that. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. I know, like, we're a small channel, but we appreciate you guys so fucking much. And uh, we're fam. You guys are family, meaning if any of you guys, I'm the executive producer of this project. Anyone wants an opportunity, just ask. And I want to say one thing. If you guys could please, whatever you do, whatever God you believe in, what it do, doesn't matter, but could you please say prayers for Micah Mary, who uh, was so excited about doing this. He tried meeting me on Sunday, but I was still at Giuseppe's doing stuff, so he was going to meet me on Tuesday instead. And he did put a picture on his Facebook at um, Castle Island. Is it Castle Island? I might have said that wrong. Um in Southie uh, with his wife, but his wife texted me. I was supposed to meet him in the North End on um, uh, Wednesday, and I was like, God, oh, what the fuck, man? Like, why didn't he just, I'm like, Mike, why don't you just message me back and tell me you can't make it? And yesterday, his wife hit me up, and uh, he's on life support, and something happened they don't even know, and he has the feeding tube in and all that stuff, so, and he was attached to our project from the grave. And all he wanted to do was be an extra and have an opportunity and stuff. And I'll still believe me. So this whole project's gonna be dedicated to fucking to Mike. If you know, but if you can heal up in time and all that, though, fucking Mike, we love you. And um, it just goes to show you guys. I was talking to him on the phone like a day before, and he was all excited to meet and fucking talk about the project and like he couldn't believe that that i was going to pat's house like we were just having a great time great talk great guy and uh just a happy guy met the girl of his dreams like he's he was he's trying to improve his life and he then he did like i believe he was like 14 years sober i don't know but yeah mike and mary guys please say for you you know please throw some good energy towards him because uh Anyone who's attached, anyone who's subscribed, attached to the project, anyone who's subscribed to the show, I would do it for any one of you. Um, you know, so thank you. I had to say that. Mike, get better, pal. And um, with that, guys, you can get Johnny's books at... Uh, the chats aren't coming up now. Hold on. You On Amazon, obviously. Up oh, there they are. Those those who won write history. See, Copa with Big C knows what's up. It's written by the victors. Yes, it is though written by the victors, but it doesn't mean that it's actually always fact. Because you know egos are involved with writing. But back then, though, there's also writings that get there found back then. That's different. What's that? I'm trying to see. Oh. What's the... What the old wars back? What old? I don't know what you mean, Big J. The old wars back. Not sure, pal. Just let me know. Good night, Rand. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Coping with Big C. You're exactly right. Subscribe up, guys. Like. Just see if make a trip me miss anything my man and peach creepy joe what the old wars back no no old wars with anyone i don't know if you were thinking uh i you know i gotta though get ready to take off though but uh, so rap bastards guys new york times bestseller it's on amazon 
Get that though from Johnny. Um, also, Wayne Klingman, check him out. Uh, Wayne's got some awesome books up on there. One on the Buffalo Mob. What, great writer. Nick Christopher's too. Check out his books. But Johnny's, uh, I think you'll like this. La Senorita, I know you would. A Kid from Southie. And um, a novel full of hard choices, romantic gestures, and the real grit of street life. A Kid from Southie explores the temptation of power and the sacrifice that comes along with it. And it's extremely, um, it's, it's like John's story. You know, you're a boxer. Whitey knows he was tough as nails. And then he went into Whitey. But John Redshay's first book, Rap Bastards, was a New York Times bestseller. He grew up in the projects of South Boston and won many titles as an amateur boxer before becoming a professional boxer. John still enjoys training, boxing, and is an avid Boston sports fan. And uh, here we go. High school senior, any kind of light. All right, so here's the book. So it's John, but they changed the names. High school senior Aiden O'Connor's life is in turmoil. He's bored with school, and his growing skill at boxing won't pay the rent. That's due after his drunken father takes off. To make matters worse, someone's seen to that his mom can't find a job in any pub in South Boston. Lured by his childhood friend Tommy on the promise of easy money, Aiden reluctantly gets mixed up with the Irish mob. Struggling to make ends meet and feel worthy of his smart, beautiful, new Cuban love interest, Aiden's strong sense of honor makes him a bit too good at his job with Liam, the king of the street, who wants to keep Aiden around as his second in command for secret reasons of his own. Yep, that's Whitey. Conflicted about nearly everything, Aiden has to figure out where his loyalties lie and when he's had enough. Exploding with tough choices and the real grit of true crime, A Kid from Southie is the story of one teen's dangerous trip through the temptations of power and the sacrifice that comes with it on his way to deciding who he wants to be. So that's street life right there, guys. Like, that's John's, you know, like, Aiden, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that's street life, meaning that's John and Whitey. And it's called A Kid from Southie. Real cheap, guys. I just think you'd enjoy it. It's a nice, quick read. And Johnny's a fantastic fucking writer. But this is... Yeah, no, he wrote it too. He has that street sense, though, with the ghostwriter. But listen, I love you all. Subscribe. And I think you guys are fucking incredible. And please subscribe to La Senorita. This isn't all about me, guys. This is all about you, too. Anyone else out there with a YouTube, like, you know, just whenever you're around, let me know. But La Senorita hit 500. Let's get her to 600. And uh, congratulations, because she does though, do a lot of work with those little things. So, you know, keep it going, La Senorita. You should start doing lives and stuff, too. That'll jump up your subscribers. And if you do, like, some 15-second shorts, La Senorita, your show will blow up. But they got to be real interesting right from the gate, because people's attention spans are like, nye, nye. all right, guys, I love you. Subscribe to Mafia Truth. What a weekend in Boston and Springfield. Thank you, Giuseppe DiArco. Thank you, Pat Nee. Thank you, Jimmy Shirts. Thank you, everyone. And uh, what a trip. And I love you guys so much. I really fucking do. And if anyone wants an opportunity, reach out. And remember, Mike and Mary, we're praying for you, brother. We're praying for you. Good night, Mike.